Building your own computer helps you understand how computers work and gives you confidence to upgrade and fix your own computer problems. Today, we're going to go through the seven key components of a modern gaming computer and how each component affects the performance and function of your computer. Hello, I'm Mr. Code. It's been about six years since I bought my laptop and it's finally time for an upgrade. Unlike a desktop PC, laptops are very limited with how you can swap or upgrade various components because of the way everything is optimized to work in a neat portable package. As a result, laptops are very portable but not very powerful. I want my next computer to be super fast and easily upgradable, so that is why I am building a desktop computer. There are seven key components to choose from when building your own PC. They are the CPU, the motherboard, the graphics card, the RAM, storage, case and power supply. This video is not sponsored by any computers parts manufacturers or any computer companies. They're just my choices, so make sure you do your own research when you're building your own computer. By the way, it is not every week that I assemble a new computer, so if you find my video helpful, then please consider liking the video and assembling that subscribe button. The CPU is the heart of any computer, and in a nutshell, it performs calculations. Lots of calculations. Modern CPUs have a number of cores, and more cores mean more calculations done at once. My CPU has 6 cores and 12 threads, so up to 12 calculations can be done at the same time. The frequency of these calculations are measured in gigahertz, or billions of times per second. Multiplied with my threads, my CPU can make 30 billion calculations every second. Next we have the motherboard. This is a giant card that brings everything together on a computer and adds features like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and USB ports. The motherboard size also determines the general size of your computer. The bigger the board, the bigger the case that is needed to cover it up. I mount the CPU into the CPU slot carefully because the slightest mistake can ruin the processor. Along with the CPU, we need a dedicated fan to cool it, but I won't install it just yet. I want to put in a few other things first because if I install the cooler now, I won't have enough space to squeeze these other parts in. So now I'm installing two sticks of RAM. These are often come in pairs or DIMMs, dual inline memory modules. RAM stands for Random Access Memory and helps temporarily storing data on your computer while it is performing tasks. The more RAM you have, the better your computer will perform. However, RAM is also known as volatile memory, meaning that it can only store information temporarily when your computer is powered on. To keep your data stored in the long term, you need some storage. And I am using two M.2 solid state drives or SSDs. These perform the same function as hard drives or hard disks in the past, but often many times faster. The storage space is measured in bytes, and a single byte can store about 256 characters. A kilobyte is a thousand bytes, a megabyte is roughly a million bytes, and a gigabyte is roughly a billion bytes. My SSD can store 4 terabytes, which is around 4 trillion bytes. Most computers still use mechanical hard drives with physical spitting disks and a read-write needle. Mechanical hard disks also store much more data than similarly priced SSDs, but I want my computer to be super fast, so that is why I am using solid state drives instead. The beauty of building my own computer means that I can always add a bigger hard drive if I need it later. Now it's time to install the CPU cooler. The CPU cooler plays a very important job in a high-end computer because if you don't have a cooler, then the CPU can overheat and cause all sorts of problems, corrupt your computer and make it unworkable. It's really important to get a cooler working and here you can see there's a, a really big radiator and a powerful fan that pulls in the air and disperses the heat from the CPU. Next, I have my graphics card, or GPU. Along with the CPU, the GPU is often the most expensive part of a computer. 
it makes its biggest difference or biggest impact on video games to make sure that they run smoothly with high detail settings. I play lots of video games, so I make sure that my graphics card is up for the challenge. There are three major GPU manufacturers, NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. And each manufacturer has different architecture and features, which mean it is difficult to measure or compare one card from another. But in general, newer cards will perform better than older cards. And the best way to check if a GPU is going to suit your needs is to make sure that you look for reviews online testing your graphics card on the games that you want to play. More recently, high-end graphics cards are in demand not because of games, but because of generative AI and neural networks. GPUs have a highly parallel structure, able to perform thousands of calculations simultaneously, not just the dozen or so as in a CPU. This makes them highly suited for performing AI-related tasks. Next, we have a power supply to keep everything running. I am using a Corsair Gold power supply that pumps out 850 watts. To calculate how much power your computer needs, simply add up the power usage of all your main components and add 50 to 100 watts extra to handle any extra components. Once everything is ready, we will need a case to protect our computer from dust and to properly ventilate all the components. A good case has good airflow, Dust, dust protection and easy to access ports. My case has some built-in fans to improve airflow and some RGB lights to decorate the system. Usually a larger case will provide better airflow at the cost of extra space. Smaller cases are more convenient but have poorer airflow and they're also much harder to work with because of the tight spacing. And once your computer is built, you will need to install windows and drivers for all your components. Now, take a look at the final result in all its beauty. My Robotics Center Creator Academy is dedicated to teaching kids about coding and robotics. And if you're in Australia, why not visit us in Eastwood or Chatswood, New South Wales, to see how we can support your child or school robotics program. Visit our website at www.creatoracademy.au. That's it from me today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.